Do you know what's really spooky? This video was sponsored by Keeps, a subscription service that focuses on making it easier and more affordable for men to treat their male pattern baldness online. If I had a penny every time I lost hair, I'd have a hundred thousand dollars. You may have a lot of different friends with different remedies or ideas, and it can sort of all kind of feel like a crapshoot. You don't really know how to navigate the whole thing. But Keeps, as a service, is a real chance to save your head. With Keeps, you can simultaneously get treated from the comfort of your own mansion and also have a licensed doctor help choose the correct treatment plan for you. The program itself can take four to six months before you start seeing results. So basically, the sooner you start, the more hair you save. If you're ready to take action and prevent hair loss, go to keeps.com slash relax or click the link in the description to save 50% off your first order. That is K-E-E-P-S dot com slash relax. Nintendo proves all the best things are green. Yeah. What is with Japan making fictional overpowered Italian? Yeah. Anyways, I sort of left you all hanging. Up high, down low. Ho oh ho! Got it. Luigi. I'd introduce him to my parents, but not my grandparents. We were talking about Mario, but no mention of Luigi, like at all. Well, I love Luigi, and I want to make a full video on him, as people do. Look, you only know my name, not my story. And every good one starts with Luigi. So Christmas 2002 is basically the year that changed my life. I got Shrek 1 on oh, VHS. I got the Shrek a Game Boy Advance. Holy crap! What is that? Game Boy. A Game Boy Advance adapter for the GameCube and a GameCube. He's got GameCube, he's got the whole set! So, I think it's been a full 24 hours since I've said this, but oh ah. my god, I love this game. I mean, how did they get it in there? How did I land on the best 2D Mario as my first damn video game? I, I gotta say, the palette, it was already starting off beautifully. This is where I first grasped the supreme being known as Luigi. Everyone knew Mario, for better or worse, you know, that's Mario, but Luigi differed in this game from Mario due to his higher, more wobbly jump. Remember when I talked about corporate logos? Yeah, Luigi reflects his playstyle by his design. He's taller, lankier, and a little less balanced overall. In the 2000s and 2010s, they sort of reinforced this in many games, from the RPG stuff all the way to mainline Mario. But this difference between the brothers was always established here for me. Mario was the basic playable character, and then Luigi was... weird. <laughs> oh yeah, because he's neurotypical. But Luigi's differences first began in Super Mario Bros. 2, The Lost Levels. He had less traction than Mario and a higher jump. And this is perhaps where Luigi's personality began. Right there. Now, I don't know about human beings, but if you ask your dermatologist why you have bad traction, they're probably going to prescribe you a cream. Get those rocky feet checked. Well, Luigi, he was much more tricky as a character. He had higher highs, but you'd make more mistakes as you were slipping around more. And maybe people associated Luigi with being goofier, unreliable compared to his brother. But here, we didn't get lost levels. They said, get lost levels. We got something better. I'm not sorry. Yeah, this was a first for many things, including playable fungi. I like your fun, G. And here, it was where Luigi established many of his core traits. And just like Peach and Toad, like it wasn't even a Mario game first. A lot of their core traits were based off of something that was sort of just obligatory. So, like we say in the Luigi community, I was in a unique Luigi position. I was playing him on the Game Boy Advance and in my first 3D game, a 2D fighter. And my first impression of him in 3D would be... The Cain and Abel parable? To my joy, Luigi was schmoovin' like I always knew him to move. He was more slippery than Mario, he had a higher jump and was more unorthodox in his movements. And now that I think about it, this was to reinforce how he played in Mario 2 and subsequently, the other games he's appeared in over the years. 
Anyways, Luigi in Smash. It's a great representation of how he came to be over these years, and while Smash 64 and these traits were good, Melee is where this Luigi took off. That is not Luigi. <laughs> So let's take a look at his moves and how this sort of defined Luigi in this time period. You gotta remember, he didn't have the games he has now, and in Melee, he and many of the Mario characters were still kind of just jumping in a 3D. So his character portrait, what are you, what is he looking at? Why, why is he like seeing a nice booty? The fireball is a good place to start. Mario's moves like you'd expect, it bounces like a ball. But Luigi's defies gravity, and he even gestures way more smugly when he fires it. Now I thought this was just a reference to how Luigi moved. He's weirder, so his balls are misshapen. Don't shut up. But really, this difference comes from the game we can all trust. Mario Bros. I do not trust people who play this for fun. Anyways, the red balls, they bounce around like Mario's, but these green ones, they move horizontally, wobbly. And that's an interesting place to take from, as this was really Luigi's Player 2 debut. I had my own P2 debut playing this game. And as time went on, green fireballs became associated with Luigi, so there you go. And this sort of light and off-balance style follows through for a pretty lackadaisical fighting style. His forward smash is a closed knife jab. And his jab attack? He's throwing it back like a fish off the boat! And that caboose still has some action in the down tilt. Weirdest of all is his side special. Probably enforcing, you know, his height in looking long, so turning him into a missile, I guess? Even weirder, it has a 1 in 8 chance of... And even his up special, it also has a chance of doing more damage and it moves very vertically. What's with all this hard, horizontal and vertical... Oh... Now, all of these unorthodox, sometimes extremely effective attacks are to reinforce how his less balanced style can be effective in some situations in those Mario games, but in others, you may just prefer having Mario something predictable. And in Smash 4 for an ultimate, whew, he's gotten a ton more animation changes to make him fit this Luigi identity closer. Starting with my favorite, the flutter jump I was delighted to see in Super Mario Advance 2, it's, it's in this game, and that's not all. Finally, the damn Poltergust. Yeah, it wasn't the final smash, but having it as your grab. A plunger, finally in a Mario Brothers moveset. Not to mention, it references the newest Luigi's Mansion game. <laughs> Am I dreaming? They're referencing new games? <laughs> Funny, huh, right, Samus? <laughs> Man, they, they even gave him a ground pound. I swear, Ultimate did such a service to the more cartoony characters. Because, like, look at his facial expressions. In all of his attacks, you just see a wash of emotions over his face. From confidence to embarrassment. <laughs> being afraid in like three seconds. But something is clear from Luigi's moveset. They wanted to enforce Luigi's... Luigi, do not go in that trash bin. I mean, the dash attack. The bane of your existence as a kid. You throw that out and you may as well just drop the controller. And the taunt. What do you mean, oh shucks, oh gee, what, what is, why? How's that a taunt? Apparently, this is from Mario Party 2, but Sakurai strikes me as a guy who only plays against CPUs. And is up special. Yeah, you can do a fancy new spangled zoom in, but when you miss, it makes you feel like the pavement near a goose pond. And his entrance animation. How does he greet you at the start of the battle? Making the face that was on the Luigi's Mansion cover. <laughs> Sort of. It's a lot more obvious in the taunt, which also has a bunch of other references from games like the RPG ones to Mario Galaxy. And this crouch walk is seen in Luigi's Crawl and Smash, sort of concluding his cowardly persona. Luigi is interesting to look at because from his first Smash appearance to now, his identity went through an entire makeover. So each iteration of Luigi in the Smash games, it was like a different point of this evolutionary chain. Even as a kid, I really knew they didn't have a plan for this guy. It's clear Luigi has changed a lot since the years of Smash 64. He's sort of developed an entire identity through many of these spin-offs. This hesitant, awkward, and emotionally teetering plumber. But I think it goes deeper than this. It's all fun and games, but when did Luigi become Luigi? And why did he become this way? What made him like this? And what does this say about us?
Luigi is more than Mario's brother, or maybe less. Because the point of Luigi is also referenced in his Smash moveset. Because he is the original clone fighter. In Smash Bros, there are a handful of characters that take <laughs> their animations and attacks from other characters, even if it doesn't make sense. And this is done just to increase how many characters can appear in the game, because it takes way less time to make a copy of a character than a completely original one. But Luigi, he's the original. And I don't just mean like Smash clones. I mean any clone that's appeared in gaming. Tied with Ms. Pac-Man. <sighs> Because here is Luigi's first appearance. These are as much Mario Brothers as Pepperoni's a meatball. Basically, Luigi would be on the left screen, and this game is pretty archaic. All you do is press up and down, but you still have to have the brothers work together. And for the most part, Luigi being the second additional character, this has been his role in every game he sort of appeared in. You need a player two? There he is. And it sort of gives me a barren, empty feeling. Luigi never started with a character concept, or even a gameplay one. He was literally made out of obligation. They needed another character and recolored the main sprite to another one. And the color they chose for him? It's just the opposite color of red on the color wheel. The first game with these differences was Lost Levels, the birth of arguably his core traits. His slippery, unreliable, uncertain self. But again, the identity only exists as a foil to the original. Luigi wouldn't exist without Mario. And even in Luigi Luigi Shitterature Club, he's just a play on the tried and true Mario. No, no, no. Worse. He's just a sprite swap of the character from Doki Doki Panic. What's even... what's her name? <gasps> Mama? Mama Luigi? You know, he kind of always did seem maternalistic. The color choice, his name just being another Italian name, the fact he's Mario's brother, every detail about him is obligatory. Do you really expect me to eat that? Well, I'm not hungry right now, maybe later for a snack, but... I'm upset! I'm not having the loss of Luigi! He, he's nothing! He, he's a character sprinkled on top of all of his nothingness! It's like the sauce they serve at Italian restaurants. Like, it's not even but... Game design is so cool! This is a pretty common technique in games. In Smash Bros, yes, we wince at it, but... This is just game developers being resourceful. Using old assets to create new ones. Basically, without any time cost. The clouds in Super Mario Bros. are a famous example, but so are the Goombas. In other games like Metroid, they recolor enemies of a harder tier to signify their strength. In Sonic Adventure 2, many of the levels, they share many of the same assets, but because they change the scenario, whether it's day or night, they feel like totally new levels. I mean, this happens with games today. It's just smart. And in a lot of senses, Luigi is the original clone character. One that inspired similar techniques we see in games from Zelda, Mortal Kombat, Street Fighter, and ultimately... You wanna see what Fire Emblem looked like when Brawl came out? Simpler times. But when it comes down to characters, it can feel very hollow. Like, everything you came to love about this thing is just... a lie. Are we just supposed to accept the reality that this thing, this character we love so much, is actually just meaningless? Maybe it's a matter of perspective. Luigi was brought into this world and morphed by the experiences around him. At the start, he was what was needed of him, like his brother. But over time, he had a chance to spread his wings. He became his own character and established himself as that person. He isn't doomed to the genetic eventuality he was created for, nor what he thought he had to be. While he was entirely created for a singular purpose, he's become a fan favorite for what did make him unique. For being the second player allowed us to maybe project our own emotions onto what it would be like to be the not favorable sibling. Maybe he's so shy, lacks confidence, and moves around so... 
Just go already, I can't stop you at this point. Because of his years living in this role. Ironically, Luigi was derived from nothingness, yet he has more personality than the original. It's kind of charming because we are all gravitated towards Luigi because maybe we feel like him. Maybe in our lives, there are Marios who don't struggle with anything and get through all of these hard tasks without even breaking a sweat. Whereas, honestly, yeah, we're cowardly. We, we, we get afraid of simple things and sometimes we don't want to fight, but we do anyways. And that is what Luigi represents. Sure, he's not perfect, but that's a lot more relatable than Mario. I'm talking about the Mario Brothers, people. So go forth, be an embarrassing mess, make mistakes, and look like a fool doing it. Because none of us are the best at everything. But that doesn't mean you can't succeed in your own way. This has been Know Your Moves. Thanks for watching, and I will see you on the flip side. <laughs>